Okay, this is a quick video to show you how I use Lightroom to check the sharpness of images. Lightroom is a fantastic program to do this. It's quick and it's effective. And it can show us some images which we otherwise might think are sharp, but in fact, seen at a closer or a more magnified resolution, they're in fact not sharp at all. So firstly, uh, just a couple things. Uh, it's very simple to zoom in on an image. As you can see here, we've got an image on the screen. Uh, I simply click my mouse over the cursor and you can just zoom in and have a look around the image. In this case, it's a portrait, so the most important thing is that the eyes are in focus, which in this case they are. At this point, zoomed in, I can scroll through these images at the bottom one by one and it stays zoomed in and I can check the focus on all of them. And you can just see that one there. So go back to this one, nice and sharp. This one's just a little bit off. Not a lot, uh, but just a little bit. Now you notice up here in the top left hand corner, you can see Navigator and it has Fit, Fill, and then 1 to 1, 2 to 1. I'm using 1 to 1 at the moment in terms of when I zoom in. It's the best way to achieve or to ascertain focus. If you go to say 2 to 1, it's just a little bit too zoomed in and it can work, but at that level of zoom some of the uh, pixels tend to look a little softer than normal anyway. So 1 to 1 is the best way to view the images. Something else you can do is to compare images as well. So we can select multiple images. So in this case we'll select two down the bottom and we go to this XY function, the compare view. Puts them up, I'll get rid of my things. It puts them up side by side. Now if we zoom in, it zooms in on both. And here we can clearly see the image on the left hand side, nice and sharp. The image on the right hand side, just a hair of focus. So if I was going through and selecting these images, I would be getting rid of this one on the right, but I'd definitely be considering this as a keeper on the left hand side. To give you another example of that, we have a look at these couple of images. Now if we look at them like this, they look fairly close in focus and uh, if we were to print these online or do them at low resolution, there'd be no problems. But uh, when we put them under critical evaluation, you'll find that in fact uh, one is sharp and one is not. So let's zoom in again on these. And you can see there's quite a difference here. Have a look at that right hand image. That eye is beautifully in focus, very, very sharp. It's the eye that's slightly closer to the camera, so that's the one we really want in focus. Whereas we look on this side, you can see that it's quite a bit off. In fact, the one that's closest to the camera is missed and the one that's back of the camera is slightly more in focus. So in this case I'll actually just, uh, in using a shallow depth of field as you can see, f2.2 on an 85mm lens, I've just missed the focus. Uh, and again in this case this image would be, uh, in that case I would get rid of that whereas I'd use this one here on the right hand side. So when I'm going through images, say if we were to look at these ones down the bottom, we'll get back to the normal view. If I'm flicking through these ones that I've got down the bottom, one of the things I'll do, it's not good enough to simply look at the images as they are and go, yep, that's fine. I need to make a critical evaluation. So particularly on portraits and eyes, I'll be looking at this portrait. I'll come in, I'll say, yep, that looks good. This one looks good as well, I'll go through, then I might get to this one, I'll click in, I'll be like, oh hang on a minute, that one's a little soft. I'll click to the next one, and same things, like wow, that one looks really off. And then this one here is nice and sharp. So it's an excellent way using Lightroom to evaluate our images, make decisions on critical sharpness. Uh, now sharpness is not everything when it comes to photography. Uh, but uh, it's certainly one of the factors that can help us as we start to go through a shoot and, uh, and make our selections. The ones that are obviously out of focus, you can simply discard those and work on the rest. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks.